Okay, welcome. So this is uh, this is the uh, DSD lecture for Friday, the 18th of September. I uh, can't believe this month is just flying by. This is the end of the fourth week, and we start the fifth week on Monday. That seems hard to believe, too, that we're already into it five weeks. Crazy, huh? Anyway, um, so here we are. We're... Uh, so here's let's uh, let me shrink this down. Um, so we here's our syllabus, and we're doing the review of logic design. We have a uh, we have the test on the 23rd. So that's coming up. So here we are here we are on the 18th. So we have Monday, and then uh, yeah, Monday, and then sorry Monday here. So Friday Monday. And then Wednesday we'll do the chat. We'll do the test, and um, it'll be online. Should be fairly straightforward. Um, and you know, again in this course, the the labs and their project count the most, and the tests are not too much. I, this will probably I don't know. I forget what the syllabus says, but maybe three or four percent or something, maybe five percent or six. It's not much. Maybe seven at the most. Anyway, um, so I don't want you to blow it off, obviously, but uh, but. It should be pretty straightforward. All right, that having been said, let's do it. Um, okay, so um, let me pull up the slides. Sorry, I should have done that ahead of time. Let me. I'm going to pause it here a second. Okay, continuing the march here. So let me uh, let me expand this, and I'm going to switch cameras here so you can see the thing. Uh, well, okay. Let me. Sorry. Let me do this first. Um, yeah. Sorry. Okay. Okay, there we go. All right, now, so, so, so we're talking about. So we just got through doing the sequential uh, counter, and now we're gonna, and then we were gonna do the non-sequential. And uh, I can't remember how far we got on this, but basically, we'll we'll get started. Okay, so we're gonna do a non-continuous sequence. This should bring back memories. So. Uh, so we basically we set up the state graph, uh, only include the desired states, range them in proper sequence. Okay, so so let's do that. So here's the state graph. So we're going to start any one of these can be a starting point, and we're going to go around this circle, and then um, sorry, and then what what you do? So we're going to go from zero to four to seven to two to three and back to zero. Now we're missing one, five, and six. They're they're just not they don't care is basically. But the problem is when you power this up, it could start up in one of these sequences. So at some point you have to go back and look and see what what would happen unless you're going to build initialization circuits into these. Which if you were doing this on an FPGA, that would be fine. You do get to initialize those. But if you're making an integrated circuit or connecting up discrete logic, no, you don't get to initialize it. Then uh, it's going to power up in whatever state it wants. And these are some of the possibilities. Okay, so anyway, so now we, we create our state table and we order, organize it uh, in straight binary order so that we can uh, have some hope of getting this mapped into the to the to the uh, mapped into the K maps. Now, if we're going to do it with T's, which I probably would not do, because T's usually require the greatest amount of hardware. So I I, I I'm much more inclined to do it with D's. Uh, and if you really want to save hardware, do it with JKs. But in any event, um, <clears throat> so if you did it with Ts, RJKs, RS flip flops, you have to have extra columns. But if you do it with these, these are fine because whatever your D input is, is what your next state will be. So for instance, here you want to go from 0 to 1. Well, so you make 1 your D input, and it'll go to 1. And here you make zeros your D input, and it'll stay at 0. But if you want to use Ts, if you want to toggle it, you have to make the T a 1, and if you want to hold, you have to make the T a 0. And it's the same when you're going from 1 to 0 as it is from when you're going from 0 to 1. It's a toggle uh, either way. So you have to have the T input as a 1. So here we're going from 1 to 0, 1 to 0, so we have to toggle the B and the C. And notice, um, yeah, so it doesn't matter whether you're going from 0 to 1, as in the A here, you have to make T a 1, or whether you're going in from uh, 1 to 0. 
However, if you're staying at 1, like you are here with B, B is 1 here, it's 1 here. So the, the TB input is a 0 because you're holding. So whether it's 0 to 0 or 1 to 1, it's a hold. And whether it's 1 to 0 or 0 to 1, it's a toggle. So that's how the T inputs go. So in this case, for 0, we want to go to 4. And that's because 0 to 4, okay? 4 to 7, 7 to 2, and 2 to 3. So, but 1 is a don't care. 2 goes to 3, 3 goes to 0, 4 goes to 7, 5 and 6 are don't cares, and 7 goes to 2. And then, now we can take uh, our, we can create a flip-flop for the T inputs, uh, for TA, TB, and TC. They're going to be three variable maps. The three variables are ABC. There is no input X in this case, because uh, it's just based on the status of the flip-flops. And there's really no output. But you could have the flip-flops drive LEDs so we can see the count in LEDs. But, uh, but there's, no real, you know, there's no real output other than just noticing the states of the flip-flop. All right, so, uh, so here we are. Um, yeah. So we do, the, we do our K-maps. I'll just put myself aside for a minute. We do the K-maps, and um, so... Uh, we have here then for the A flip-flop, the next state of A, we have, well, these are the next state maps. So if we were doing K flip-flops, so these maps came out of the next state columns because the book does that. But obviously, if you're not using D flip-flops, you don't need to do the next state K maps. Now, there is, there is a little trick you can use the next state K, the next state K maps, and you can generate the T outputs from these. But it's much simpler and more straightforward just to do it from the T maps. And so the T maps just use these columns. So it should be one, don't care, zero, 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 don't care, zero, one. Or zero, don't care, don't care, one. And that's what you should see here. Uh, zero, don't care, one, one, one. Oh, that was, that was A. Yeah, one, don't care, zero, 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 don't care, zero, one. Or don't care, one. So the TA input is this, the TB is this, and the TC is this. And boom. Uh, And so we, these are how the things are grouped, okay? And here's what the circuit looks like. You have uh, three R gates going into all the inputs, and here you have two AND gates feeding in, two AND gates feeding in, and no AND gates here. And here, the, again, here's the, here are the equations. Okay, now, uh, if we add the don't care as a state graph, how can we figure these out? Well, you, you take this circuit, and you let it power up into say 101 one of the illegal states and then you so it's 101 now you uh, calculate what all these what what the new TA inputs are going to be based on all the A's and B's and C's so here A plus B so it's 1 0 so that's going to be a 1 so the TC is TC is going to toggle uh, and here you have uh, A B prime so A is a 1 B prime is a a B prime is a one, so that that AND gate is going to output a one. So TB is going to be a one, and uh, here we have, uh, in this case, both of these gates will output zeros. So the the OR gate will output a zero. So TA will be a zero. So TA is going to hold. It'll stay at one. TB is going to uh, uh, toggle. Uh, so it's going to go from zero to one, and TC is going to toggle. It's going to go from one to zero. So we're gonna then we're gonna be uh, one one zero. So then you can go back here, and you can see. Uh, let's see, I'm going the wrong way. So, so let's see, I didn't do it. Yeah. So from one zero one, you're gonna go to one one zero. But fortunately, when you power it up in one one zero, you'll see that it's gonna go to zero one one. And if you power it up in zero zero one, you're gonna see it goes to one one one. So basically, what you then have to tell your customer is that. You, if you don't want me to build any initialization circuitry, assuming I'm using a making a chip or using discrete circuits, um, but not an FPGA, uh, then it, if it boots, you might have worst case two clock cycles before your count's guaranteed good. Okay, now if you power up in one of these legal states, that's fine. But if you power up in 101, it's going to take you one clock cycle, two clock cycles, and then you'll be at three, and then you'll stay in the count sequence after that. If you power up in 110 or 001, it'll just take one clock. The next clock cycle, you'll be in one of the legal states.
So that's that's what you have to tell them. And of course, your customer your customer might say, "Oh, I didn't realize that. Maybe I maybe we do need to make some initialization circuitry." All right. So uh, notice. Let's see. I'm going to go back here a couple. Uh, notice here. I thought I wrote on here, but I didn't. Uh, yeah. So let's count. Let's count the gates. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven gates. Okay, keep that in mind. All right. Um, sorry, I should have punched the other button. All right. Now let's do it with the SR latches. Now, like I said, we're going to have all these extra columns out here uh, because the uh, SR latches are kind of screwed up. I wonder why that was the case. I don't know. This is really interesting. Let me let me see if I can fix this real quick. I do not know, but it looks like uh, yeah. I, I don't know what the deal was. All right. All right. So that looks a little better. Uh, I guess I should have fixed these two. Let me do that real quick. All right. Okay, now, so here we are. Now, remember the way the SR latch goes. Since you're not allowed to have um, the uh, S and R be one at the same time, um, then it changes things a little bit. And look at this. These these aren't lined up. But anyway, so it's S-A-R-A, S-B-R-B, S-C-R-C. Um, yeah. All right. Well, anyway, whatever. It looks better than the other one. Um, okay. So now we have to have, instead of... Uh, 3k maps for our for our flip-flop inputs each imp, each flip-flop has two inputs so we have to have two maps for each flip-flop or six inputs s-a-r-b or s-a-r-a s-b-r-b s-c-r-c and then it looks like that i don't know it still kind of got all goofed up here and finally our hardware looks like this so we have two gates all right uh and here we don't even have any gates. We've got C going into KA and B prime going into JA. Oh, that's JA. Oh, sorry, that's JK. Oh, here's the truth table with JK. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm confusing you. Look at how many don't cares we have. We have we have more don't cares with the SR, but with JK we have even more. And since we have all those don't cares, it really facilitates getting good solutions so that we wind up with two gates. So uh, now if we do it with these, we can use the next state map. And uh, yeah, so I didn't, I think I've modified this and added in, but one of the things you see is that if you line them up, the, uh, the JK has the least number of gates, only two. The RS is next with, I think, three or four. The uh, D is next. And finally, the, the T had the most number of gates which was uh, one, two, three, four, five, five gates. All right. Now, shift, shift register. So here's a, here's a little shift register. Uh, I think we're going to do this. can't remember if we have a shift register lab or not. But um, you, have, you, have, uh, you have the ability to reset it. So you've got uh, this reset. And notice the way that it works by by the, the resets are active low. So if it's connected to zero, it's going to reset all these flip flops and set them to zero. And normally these are asynchronous. And then uh, when you want it to run, you should take the reset and flip it high because these are active low inputs. And then um, it also uh, also turns the set on for this one but the reset probably takes precedence sort of interesting these the the sets are pulled high all the time 
So since they're active low, these are turned off, but, the, but all of the resets are hooked together and they're all driven by this switch. Then you have your shift signal coming in and it's just the clock. And then you have the output of this flip-flop or, or the yeah the output of this flip flop is connected to the to the J input of this one, and so forth. And so this is gonna so when when this shifts, every every time the clock hits, it's gonna shift the bits to the right, and it's and it's just gonna uh, and the bit that comes out over here is gonna flip around and go in over here. Okay, the, um, the so okay, yeah, let me see this. All right, so um, all right, I think that's it. So more versus melee. Okay, so there's there's two main types of. There's two main types of, of uh, clock networks, and we talk about Moore and Mealy. Now, what's interesting is, uh, in the real world, most of these things uh, overlap, and we have usually a mixture. We have some, we have some Moore outputs and some Mealy outputs. The main difference between these is that the Moore outputs are only driven by the current state, so they're tied to the state. Whatever state your sequential device is in, your state machine is in, that determines the more outputs, and they stay that they stay good until the next clock hits, changes the state, and then there's a little settling time, and then they're good again until the next clock. The melee is totally different. It's driven by the current state that you're in and the next new inputs that occur. So the melee machine, after the clock hits and the state changes, there's a little time before the next input is good that the melee machine is uh, can send out uh, inappropriate information. So you don't want to read the melee outputs during that time interval. You want to read them right before the next clock. And that gives the inputs plenty of time to change because they must be good before the next clock edge or otherwise they won't they won't register properly. So so you're pretty confident if you read a melee machine the melee outputs right before the next clock edge, they'll be good. But if you read them right after the next clock uh, the next uh, clock edge, then they may very well read incorrectly because there is always going to be some uh, measurable time before the new inputs are good. All right. Um, okay. Um, so signal tracing and timing. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. This this was always I think. Um, I mean it's an important subject, but it's but it's so tedious it's painful. So here was an example. They, they gave us a circuit, and this was a more machine example, and then here they gave us a melee machine example. And for the longest time, I thought these examples had the same a function. They have nothing to do with each other, so, uh, so don't confuse it. And the main reason they put these in here was to show you uh, how the melee can give you some false outputs. All right, so how do you signal trace? Well, so you, you assume an input X, and a current state for A and B. So we'll let them start both at zero, and we have an input X that's zero. So now we go through and we calculate what these two D inputs are going to be, and also what our current Z output is. This is an exclusive OR, that's an exclusive OR, that's a, that's a regular, that's an inclusive OR. Okay, so, so you can just go through, and we did this in logic design where we put in numbers and trace this, and then you let the, you, so then you know what the D inputs are, you know what the output is, and then you let the clock hit. And after the clock hits, then uh, uh, the flip-flops assume the new D input as their state. So if that may change A, it may change B, it may change the output, and then it also changes these uh, these D inputs. In this case, you have an exclusive OR gate with X and B prime going in, and here you have a regular OR gate with X and A going in. And you calculate the new Ds, and then you get the next clock pulse. And you and then you calculate the, the outputs and um, the new inputs, and then you have another clock. And you just keep going until you get enough uh, data to see if it's working like you expected it to. Uh, and the timing chart, you can see 
uh, here's X that's changing. Here's the clock. And um, so A comes up here and then goes down here. And A, A follows a little bit delayed after the clock edge. And so does B. Uh, B stays zero till here and then it goes up. Anyway, and what you can see is that, that there aren't any false states here. But with the melee, uh, same thing. You, you have some inputs, you have a current state of A and B, and then you have your output. Now notice your output here uh, has not only the current state of the input, uh, the flip-flops, B prime, A, B and A prime both, but it also has uh, the input X. This is the new input that comes after the previous previous clock edge. Uh, and so, um, and then it, you also use that it's same information through another network to set up your JK inputs in this case. All right, and then you just kind of keep track of what's happening with A and B and the output Z. And you'll notice that after the clock edge, there's a short time where the output's zero, even though when the new inputs come, it goes to one. One is really what it was supposed to be. The zero is a false output, and you do not want to read it during that time, or you'll read it wrong. Here you have a false one output. So you do have to be really careful not to read uh, a Mealy machine right after the clock edge before the next flip-flop is changed, and it's had a little bit of settling time uh, after the latest uh, clock edge. All right. And you can see here's the false output right there and, and another one right there. False one there, false zero here. Okay, so how do we do a state table? Well, so basically uh, there's a couple of good ways to do this. One, one uh, really efficient way is to use, uh, is to use the, uh, the, state, the, the state machine charts. And we'll talk about those uh, probably on Monday. Uh, Anyway, the state machine charts definitely get us, uh, they, they, they have a definite advantage because you can calculate your equations directly from your SM chart and you don't even have to go through a state table. But it does cheat you out of a little bit of simplification uh, opportunities. So depending on what you're doing, you might, you might want to go ahead and do the state table. Um, all right. So the first thing you do, you determine the flip-flop input and uh, the output equations from the network. And then you select the type of flip-top to use. Um, and then you plot your next state map. Um, and then you basically uh, combine your, you, you, you put in your uh, flip-flop coding for all your states. That gives you the transition table. Then you do your flip-flops, uh, sorry, then you do your k-maps, calculate your flip-flop inputs, and you can then you can uh, uh, put all the uh, information in. This general sequential model stuff, I'm not going to worry about that. Um, I probably should pull this slide out. Uh, I'm, yeah, but the main thing to see is that for for a Mealy network, the the outputs, the Z's, have both not only have input from the flip flops, but they also have input from the next uh, from the next X's. Again, there could be any number of X's, any number of outputs, uh, some number of flip flops. Depends on how many states you have to have. And in the more Notice that the the common the outputs only get their inputs uh, from the flip flops. There's no direct connection, uh, and the inputs don't directly affect the outputs, uh, but they do affect the next day of the flip flops, obviously. So indirectly, they do. Um, okay, so uh, state graph for a sequence detector. So we've done this. So this is going to read a sequence. Um, it's going to read an X, and X is going to come in 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, whatever. And then there's an output that's going to be 0 unless it sees the sequence 1, 0, 1. And if it detects that, then it's going to, when it detects that second 1, Z is going to be equal to 1. And then uh, the network doesn't reset, uh, so... So then you, you just have to keep looking. So what, it, what that means is you could have 1, 0, 1, and then you could get 0, 1, which would give you an overlapping 1, 0, 1 again. And that's, that's okay. That's legal. And uh, the customer says, yeah, that's fine. Use a melee network, and we'll see, have to see how many flip-flops we need. And 
we're told we're not told to reset after we detect a target of 101. So that means we keep looking, and there can be overlapping targets. So we first construct a state graph and then the network. All right, so here's our little sequence. This helps us to get an idea of exactly what the problem is. So we like to, we like to construct this. And usually what we do with this is we uh, <clears throat> put in a test sequence, and then we show what the Z should be for this sequence, kind of sort of pseudo-random. And then we, we just make sure that we know what these uh, what the out inputs and outputs are that make this work. Okay, so um, yeah, in this case, we have our, our sequence detector. We have the input X, the output Z, and the clock. Remember, the output Z is zero unless it detects that sequence. All right. So we're gonna take a look at the Mealy state graph now for this uh, sequence detector. So the way this works, and we'll refresh your, remem your memory, the, uh, the, so for a Mealy, the outputs are associated with the links because they're, they're, in, they're not tied to the state. They're tied to the state plus the next input. So they're, they're associated with the links. And, uh, and so we'll make the next input a red, and we'll make the, ne and the, the, then the Mealy output that's determined by the state and the input will be blue. All right, so let's say we start in state S0. Now we're looking for the, the, the target of 101, but so far we don't have anything. So if we get a zero, we don't have the first item in the target, so we'll just have to stay in a state S0. And we'll get a zero, we'll output a zero. Now, if we, uh, and that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to output what, what our input is unless we get a target. Okay, now the other possibility is we get a one, which would be the first item in our target. So that would take us to state S1, which is first item in target detected. So we pop down there, but we still output a zero because we don't have a target detected. Now in S1, we can get a one, which would be, which, which, would mean that we still have the first item in our target. So we wouldn't go back to S0 and reset. We'd just stay in S1. And, uh, but if we get a 0, then we go to our next target. And we output a 0 because we still don't have the whole target. So that's S2. And again, if we get that 1, we're going to just stay there and output a 0. All right. In S2, if we get a 1, then we'll output a one because that's the target and we'll go to S1 because now we have the first one and the possible next sequence. If on the other hand we get a zero, that's a bust. So now we have one zero zero, that's nothing. So we go up to S0 and we output a zero because we didn't get a target. Yep. And that's the whole enchilada. Now, um, we can make a state table. So how many states do we have? One, two, three. So S0, S1, S2. If X is zero, if we're in S0 and X is zero, we, we stay there. And if it's one, we go to S1. So if X is zero, we stay here. If it's one, we go to S1. And that's also true when we're in S1 and when we're in S2. All right, then if we're in, um, if, if our next state is x equals x equals 1, then our next state in any, any of our other states will be S1. However, if we get a 0 in S1, we're going to go to S2 because that means we got the second item in our sequence. And then if we're in S2 and we get a, uh, we get a, uh, we get an S0, then that, then are we, we get a 0 for x then we're going to go to S0 because we busted. We don't have a target. But if we get an S1, if we get an, a 1, that is the target. So we put out a 1 and we go to S1 because now this one can count as the first one in the next sequence. <clears throat> All right. Now we're going to do flip-flop state assignment. We'll just do straight binary. We'll call S0, 0, 0, 0 S1, 0, 1, and S2, 1, 0. And we'll let a 1, 1 kind of be gone. Okay, so it'll be our, you know, yeah, our, it'll be don't cares. Now, <clears throat> if we did this with a, with an SM chart, we wouldn't be able to take advantage of the don't cares. That's one downside of using the, the, the um, SM chart. 
Okay, so now we have we have three states, S0, S1, and S2, and we've coded it. S0 is coded 00, zero right here. S1 is coded 0, 01 right there, and S2 is coded 10. And we have 11 one, one as a as a illegal, as a don't care, a state that we say will, should never happen. And so if we're in zero and we're going to go and we get a zero, we stay there. But if we get a one, we go to one. If we're in one and we get a zero, we're going to go to two. But if we get a one, then we'll stay there and so forth. And the output then is always zeros except that one time when we're going to output a one because we got ourselves on top. We got, uh, we, we, we generated the, you know, we, we uh, achieved the outcome we wanted. Okay. Hope that makes sense. Um, okay, now we can just extract the next eight columns. If we're doing D flip flops, we have one column here, over here because this represents A and B, A and B here, A and B here. So we take the A columns for our TA input, or for sorry, our DA input, and we take the B columns for our DB. They're going to be two flip flops because we only have three states. So you have a flip flop for, for uh, sorry, you have a K map for A. You have a K-map for the B flip-flop input, and you have a, a, a K-map for our output Z. And uh, the Z just comes out of this. All right, so then you simplify the K-maps, and the next state for A, the DA input is going to be X prime B, the DB input is going to be just X, and the, uh, and the output is going to be uh, XA. So when the new input comes in, it's definitely going to drive this uh, pretty significantly. If it's zero, it's going to make z zero. If it's uh, if it's one, then it depends on a. So um, so it it's definitely gonna it's gonna have a big impact. All right. So here's a uh, here's our network, and th this one just had one gate and one AND gate with x prime and b. This d was just tied directly to x, and you can see this. Uh, yeah, there's there's just that should run. But it didn't. Okay, all right. So same thing using a more. Now here we do put our state. Uh, we do put our our me our more output in our state because the more output does not depend um, does not depend on the new inputs. It only depends on whatever state you're in. So it's locked to the state. Whereas the melee is not locked to the state, it's locked to the links. All right, so we're only going to have one value on the length, and that's the links, and that's going to be the new x. So if we get a zero, we're going to stay here because we're looking for one zero one. But if we get a one, we're going to go over to s one, still outputting a zero because we don't have our our sequence yet. Now in s one, if we get a one, we can stay here, and if we get a zero, we can go on to s two. So there's a one, we're staying here. Here's a zero, we're in the S2. And then if we get a, another one, that would be, uh, that would be, well, yeah, it's, it's kind of, yeah, so if we get a zero, that's not the target. Remember the target is one, zero, one. So one, zero, now we need a one. So that's gonna take us to this node that's a target node, and we're gonna output a one. Because, we don't have melee, our, we have to have a node that has an output of one because the outputs are locked to the states. So you here the outputs all zeros, but you have to have a node where it's at, where it's one if you're ever going to have a target. And then so in S2, if we get one, zero, that's the first two items, zero, whoops, now we don't have a target, so we reset. But if we get one, zero, one, then we have a target, we output a one. And then on the next input, if we get a zero, we're going to go to S2 because now we have one zero. If we get a one, we'll just go to S1 because now we still have a one, but we don't have one zero. And then uh, that's it. Now you've covered all, all, all. You have two paths out of every node, uh, out of every node. Two paths out because you've got uh, one input, so you have two to the one, or two paths out. Okay, if you have no inputs, then you just have to have one path out. And if you have two inputs, you have to have four paths out. All right, so um, 
So here's our state table. Four states, S0, 1, 2, 3, and then all the next states. And we're going to do the flip-flop encoding. Uh, we're just going to do straight binary, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1. Well, okay, oh, they switched them. Uh, it's not quite st straight binary. We flipped the bottom two rows just to make it a little easier. So we substitute those in. Now we get our transition table. And now we can do our k-maps. Uh, uh, this column would be an a column. This would be a b. So we take the two a columns, put those in one three-variable k-map. We take the b columns, put those in another, take the output. The output doesn't have uh, three variables. It only has, it only depends on the two uh, flip-flops, but not on the new input x. So it's a two-variable k-map. And here we go. Uh, some error, my map fell apart. And so here's the, here's, here's the, here, here's, here they are, here are the resulting equations. And then uh, you notice there's a lot more hardware in this solution than there was back in uh, the more, the more, yeah, this solution. A lot more hardware. Okay, and here we go. So, um, oh yeah, sorry, I was backing up. So here's our hardware there. Look, one gate, that's it. But look at the hardware when we do the melee. Uh, sorry, the more. The melee was one gate, the more, look at all the gates. One, two, three, four, five, six. Three of them with two inputs, three of them with three inputs, and two OR gates with three inputs each. That's a lot of hardware. So. Uh, and then another gate for the output here to give us AB prime. So that's a lot of gates. So you can see a more network almost always has a lot more hardware than a melee. But here's the big difference. The big difference is that your melee uh, requires you to pay a lot more attention to when you read the outputs. Whereas with a more, uh, as soon as the clock hits, a little bit of settling time, boom, now you can read them all the way to the next clock. So that's a lot easier to interface it to other hardware. So sometimes it's worth it to do this, uh, and sometimes it's not. All right. So, so we take a problem definition that relates the inputs to the outputs, and the first thing we do, usually we construct a state graph, um, and then from the state graph we do the state table. But sometimes for some problems you might do the state table first. Then you want to do state table reduction. And there's a couple of things we do in state table reduction. We get rid of redundant states if you have a, a problem where you have a fixed number of inputs and then an automatic reset. If you don't have that, then we do an impl implication table and we get rid of uh, we get rid of um, equivalent states, states that are the, that are functionally the same. But we don't do redundant states unless we have that fixed number of inputs uh, and a reset. Okay. Um, and then, um, then you then you figure out how many states you have. That's how many flip flops at a minimum you're going to have to have. You might you might do a. Then you're going to do your flip flop state assignment. You might do something fancy like a one hot state assignment. This is particularly uh, something to consider when you're using an FPGA because you have a bunch of extra flip flops hanging around. You're going to waste anyway, so you might as well uh, use them. And sometimes that can simplify your hardware a little bit maybe speed it up, save a layer, you know, who knows. Then you, uh, then you plot your next state maps and, uh, and the input maps, and then if you need them, like if you're doing T's or JK's or RS's, but if you're using D's, you just need the next state maps, and then you drive the output functions. Um, and uh, then, you, then you basically uh, uh, have your flip-flop input equations, and you uh, hook up the logic to, to deliver the, those inputs. And then you can check your design by signal tracing. You can uh, build a little test bench and simulate it. Uh, or you can uh, put some parts together and actually uh, have, a little, uh, have a little hardware simulation or hardware testing. All right. So let's see uh, how we doing. So we're right at 40 minutes. Um, yeah, let's take a little break. Okay, so um, so let's do this one, and then I think we'll probably quit with this. 
So <clears throat> we're going to do a complex design. This is problem 14.3. So uh, uh, out of the old book. Well, that's right. You guys probably didn't have the book. Um, so let me put my. So we're going to do a sequential network with one input X and one output Z. And the network examines groups of four consecutive inputs and produces an output Z1 if the sequence is either 0, 1, 0, 1 or 1, 0, 0, 1. And otherwise it's zero. So it only can be one after it gets four values. The network resets after each group of four. So this means it's, it's the kind of problem where you can, redu you can uh, look at the possibility of getting rid of redundant states. And you can also do a, an implication table on it and see if you can find equivalent states too, I suppose. Anyway, so it says use a melee machine. So here's our test sequence. Uh, and here's, you can see, so we get four values. That's a target, so we put out a one. We get four values, not a target, so we put out a zero. Four values, it is a, the other target. We put out a one. Four values, not a target. Okay, so step one is to find the melee state graph. So, um, so it's kind of easy to uh, to do one path for the one target and one path for the other target. So here's our, our 0, 1, 0, 1 target. Here's our 1, 0, 0, 1 target. So we start in S1, and we have uh, nothing. So if our first value is a 0, then we can go over here. Um, and if our first value is a 1, then we can go over here. So on a 1, we'll go to S1. And put put out a zero, and then if we get another, if we get a, so we get a one, we go here. If we get a zero, we'll go here. Still put out a zero. If we get another zero, we'll go there. And finally, from S three, if we get a one, that's the target. So we'll go to S zero and put out a one. But if we get a zero, we'll just go back to S zero because we have to reset anyway. But we won't output a one. We'll output a zero. All right, because that because that would be one. 0, 0, 0, which is not a target. But 1, 0, 0, 1, we output a 1 because it is a target. All right, now we do the same thing over here. Go there on a 0, down there on a 1, down here on another 0, and finally back on a 1. Uh, output a the target if it's a 1 because it is the target 0, 1, 0, 1. And if we get a 0, we output a 0 because it's not a target. All right. So now that takes care of, of, of uh, if we get the sequence, but there's still several paths. We have not accounted for two paths out of every node. We have two out of S0, we have two out of six, and two out of three, but we only have one out of one, one out of two, one out of four, one out of five. So what happens in four if we get a zero? What happens in one if we get a one? Well, it, we know we can't do the target then, so we go, but we still have to count in four values. So we put another node here and we go here, and then from here, uh, we automatically would go here on on anything. And if you're in five now, you, you on a one you're going to go to eight, and then from two on a one you're going to go to eight. And of course, all this time you're going to always output zeros. The only place you output a one is on this path, and on this path. And then from eight, uh, so that gives us uh, one, two. 3, so this will be the fourth input. We're going to go back to S0, and of course we'll output zeros, regardless of what we get. Okay, so that, that completes the state graph. Now we have 1, 2, well, yeah, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 nodes. So we're going to have to have, uh, we're going to have to have um, four, 4 bits, or 4 flip-flops. So if we could reduce it a little bit, we might get by with three. So the first thing we notice is that, uh, well, we could just put this in a chart and do redundant state reduction. But if, if we just look at it and inspect it, we can also see, notice that, that the, the first, this leg and this leg are different. But once we get to S5 and S2, everything from here on out is the same. On zero, we go to S3, and on a one, we output a one and go here. On a... One, we go here, output a zero, and then we go back on whatever with no outputs. And the same thing over here. So uh, so then we can redraw it and we can we can save we can save some some states. So if we get rid of a couple of states, now we have 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven states instead of nine, and now we can do it with three flip-flops. So that was a good thing to do. All right, and uh, we're gonna do flip-flop state assignment. So uh, these, these are kind of what, well, this is what the states mean. S0 is reset, S1 means we got a zero, S2 means we got a one, S3 means we have zero, one, R1, zero of our target, and then S4 means we've got zero, one, zero, R1, zero, zero, and finally then, the last path, we either have a target or we don't. Okay, so here's our here's our state table with seven with seven states, and <clears throat> we now we just have to do flip flop state assignment and substitute it in here to make the transition table. Here's our flip flop state assignment. It takes three flip flops, and we're just doing it in straight binary order. We have one don't care because we have six states and or seven states, and we only and but we could do eight. So our our last state is a don't care and um, and then we substitute those in and we have ABC columns here ABC columns under X equals 0 ABC columns under X equals 1 and then our output we have two columns so we're gonna have uh, we're gonna have uh, four K maps one for the flip-flop a input one for B one for C and one for the output so here, here's the one for A, uh, yeah, A and B, and C and the output. And those are our equations. And you can see we've got a fair amount of hardware here. And here's the output. One AND gate, but it's got a bunch of inputs, four. Three flip-flops and a bunch of gates. All right, now, um, So uh, here's another, um, uh, yeah, well, here's one more. We'll do one more. So this is a state graph or a sequence detector. This sequence detector then, uh, it's looking for, uh, oh, I think we already did this one. It's looking for the 101 sequence. Yeah, we already did this one. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so this is, I don't know, these are just redundant. Okay, so let me see. Uh, yeah. Okay. So we'll 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 come back and we'll start with uh, redundant state elimination. Um, we'll we'll do that on uh, Monday, and we should be able to probably get through uh, probably everything else on Monday, hopefully. All right. We will finish up and we'll pick it back up on Monday.